Hello and welcome to Red Barn Acres. I'm Steven. Oh wait, what is this? Sorry, my hat was on crooked. This is a Rock Island Armory M206 pistol. Now, I just bought this yesterday. I haven't even fired it yet. I didn't want to fire it. I was a bit disgusted with the trigger pull, the grittiness, all that. So, let's go inside and sit down at the table, take this thing completely apart, and fix it like it ought to be, and then go shoot it for the first time. How crazy is that? Now I have to warn you, this video is going to be very long, so I'm going to break it into several parts for uploading. It will be well worth your time to spend the hour or so watching this video so that you know how to work on your own guns instead of complaining about how gritty the trigger is or how it hangs up or, or the trigger pull is not smooth or something like that. You will not be afraid to try this type of work on your own. I literally am going to use a screwdriver, a jeweler file, and some steel wool and some grease to fix this revolver and make it shoot like a nice one. Don't think you can do it yourself? I know you can. Just watch this video. So what I'm going to do now is do a complete disassembly. And while I've got it apart, I'm going to try to polish some internals, maybe do a little lubrication, and see if we can improve this factory trigger. All right, to disassemble this, first thing we're going to do is make sure it's unloaded. Completely unloaded. Turn it over, and there's a screw here. This screwdriver tip. This is a little bit too big. Let's grab a smaller one. There we go. Now, when I got this and took it apart for cleaning the original oil out, all of the screws were very, very loose. So loose that screws could have just fallen out if I had shot it without cleaning it first. Back. This crane here and cylinder comes out as one piece. Now, to take this out, you can unscrew this little knob on the end. And then this crane slides off. Now one thing I'm going to do for this is take my lube off and I'm going to polish this really good with steel wool, make it spin better, and uh, re-lube it and put it back on. This is a little bit rough feeling. Probably going to See if I can polish this up a little bit too. The next thing I'm going to do is take the grips off. Now this pistol comes with two pairs of grips. It comes with the wood grips and the plastic grips. I'm probably going to buy Packmire grips or Hogue grips. The ones that come for the Colt Detective Special should fit this with very little modification. The one thing that may need to be modified is where the hammer comes back, right here at this part of the grip. I think the uh, the hogue comes up a little higher, so I may have to cut some of that part out. I'm not sure about the pack mire. tight fit. Now, as you can see, the main spring here, if you cock this pistol back at this point, 
There is a hole in the shaft here. We're going to put a pin in this before we take it apart. Oh, that's too big. Let's get a smaller pin. There we go. Now we're going to release the hammer. That takes the spring, spring tension off. I can slide this out as one piece. Now I could take this off as two pieces or three pieces, but then I'd have to compress the spring to put it back on. This is just a slight bit easier. Now we have a hammer. It's only under trigger tension. Now we've got two screws here and here. Let's get a smaller bit. Now what you typically want to do is take a rubber mallet or a brass mallet or something and hit the slide here or hit the receiver here and jolt this loose. If this was a nice cold or something I'm sure somebody's going to scream at me. But I'm just going to stick this screwdriver right under here and pry this open. Be careful this is under spring tension. Cylinder catch. This is dovetailed into this piece of the receiver body. I'm just going to leave this as one piece. It will slide right out though. It has a little spring in behind it. There's the little dovetail groove. set this aside as one piece. Now here's the internals. Get a good look. So what I'm going to do is press on the trigger just a little bit. We see things start to fall apart. You can take this out. This is the I'm going to pull the hammer back slightly. I'm going to take the hammer out. The hand also comes out. Now we've got a spring here, still under tension. We've got a spring here, it's also still under tension. Maybe something someone wants to do inside a Ziploc bag, but I'm just going to go for it. Slide it right out. Got a couple pins. They're permanent in here. We're just going to leave them in. You might could drive them out, but I don't see a point. Now I've got this spring here, still under tension. I'm going to leave that in for now.
pull this out or down and then slide this up. I don't want to lose this spring. So I have to be careful. And don't bind the spring or let it go flying. There we go. It's out. That it's slightly magnetized for some reason. Now this is completely taken apart except for this one spring here and the barrel shroud. There's a barrel and barrel shroud and it is threaded in. I'm not going to unscrew this and have to realign this thing so I'm just going to leave that that's not important to me today now what I'm going to do is uh, clean any remaining oil out as you can see there's some left because I'd never taken the trigger out before so I'm going to get a uh, q-tip and some alcohol and clean this remaining oil out and then I'm going to polish up some of these inferior surfaces in here uh, there's uh, manufacturing slag still left on some of the parts, on some of the edges. I'm going to remove some of that. Uh, everywhere where a part rubs, like the trigger rubs here, anything that's gritty, I'm going to see about polishing any of this, any of these surfaces. Oh, found another part. I'm going to look at this. Anybody know what this is? It's a cylinder catch. Slides right through here and holds the cylinder. Okay, we're going to go ahead and remove that and set that aside. Now, one more part. Anybody see it? Firing pin. There we go. I don't know much about that. It may have to be pressed out, but I'm going to leave it in there. I'm assuming any gritty feel, yeah, it's a little gritty in there. It's going to wear out with use come looser so I'm not gonna risk any damage by trying to remove the firing pin at this time because I don't see any obvious ways to remove this except pressing it out there we go all right I'll be back I'm going to use some alcohol and q-tips to get in here see if this removes it somebody said it would yeah, it seems to be doing a great job now some people put a uh, grease lubricant in here around all these parts to smooth out the action. I'm going to try that along with a combination of some polishing. We'll see what we can do. I'm probably just going to go ahead and take this spring out now. Be careful, it's under tension. Spring on this spring. I'm gonna lose that. Notice 
is this pin on that spring is bent toward the back side a little bit. I don't know if that's intentional or not, but it sure is. All right, I'm going to clean up some of the parts one by one and see where they scratch at on the frame. And uh, then we'll know what we need to modify, what we need to polish on. There's the hammer. And I noticed this is a real gritty feeling on this movement. This wants to bind even a little bit. So I'm not sure if it's on the spring or on the frame itself, but I'm going to remove this pin, being careful not to lose this detent and spring here. And uh, polish this a bit, clean this up. Oops, run up through my pad. I need to have a block all right I've got a pad now cutting board continue driving that pin out all right now I've captured that I'll hold it and then slowly remove it so I don't lose the detent and spring inside got the three parts here not sure if you can see that they're kind of small I'm not focusing this camera in and out over here. Now I'm going to run a jeweler's file in here and try to remove any scratchy edges. Switch files. I don't mind doing this on a $250 pistol. I wouldn't dare do this on a Colt or something like that. We'll see how this improves things. Just, you know, the detail work, the deburring, things like that can make a world of difference in how one shoots. kind of gritty on the edge but since it's case hardened I'm not going to do much more than just a little bit of steel wool now it does scratch on the frame here that's pretty rough 
along this curvature and over here. So I'm going to polish that down real quick with a file and then I'll come back with some steel wool. These are the kind of things that speed up a good break-in process where these parts will typically wear on each other. Got some shininess on that now. Same on the other side. You can see the shiny spots. Where there's a shiny spot now, it's basically a manufacturing irregularity where the parts are not perfectly flat. If that flat file can take a corner down, that means the manufacturing process is a little sloppy. So this, this can correct those jagged edges that drag and make your trigger action feel gritty. You don't want to go too far down though. these parts are case hardened. As soon as you start taking off those edges, that's when parts can wear, but this is stuff that will normally come off. You don't want to cut off too much of the diameter of this right here or your trigger will be too sloppy side to side as well. These little edges like this little corner right here, that can be concerning because of how easy that is to take that material off, it was basically sticking out really far here along that edge. Same thing here and here. This was dragging pretty good. All right, get the steel wool, give it a final polish. This is double zero, double aught steel wool. I haven't seen many videos where people go into this amount of detail. I applaud you for sticking with me if you're here this far into the video. But this kind of stuff is what anybody can do to their own firearms at home. They just are brave enough. I'm going to hit this right here just a little bit. Alright. You can see any differences in this. Looks like it's been shot a lot. That's the whole point. Let's get those fine edges worn off to where it operates a lot smoother. You can see it really good on this side here. I'm going to clean out any steel wool particles that are stuck in here. Give it a good washing. Hmm. Found a pin. I have no idea where that goes. Oh, that's the pin I knocked out. Okay, great. 
as one part gets fixed, we have to look at where it typically would wear at. Looks like this rides a little bit on the back of the frame right here. It's rubbing. Polish that just a little bit. Take some of the parkerization off, I think, would, uh, would help that out a little bit. Yeah. Let's do that. I'm going to steal wool back. Smooth this out a little bit. Parkerization is a coating. We want to make it as smooth as we can here without actually taking it off. That feels better. Just just a light polish. It's actually kind of shiny now compared to the other surface that's matte. That's shiny just with a little bit of steel wool. That's all I'm going to do to that. I'm going to do the same to the other surface on the frame where it's rubbing. That's rubbing here. I'm going to do the same polish right there with some steel wool. Not going to take a Dremel to anything on this. It just seems to be a better decision to do this by hand so it's slow. I know it makes for a slow video, but I don't want to mess up anything. Now that's polished pretty good now. Let's see how the two parts go together now. You can hear them touching, but there's no grit put a little grease in there it'll be nice and smooth that's good now on the sides I mentioned that uh, this rubs on the frame I'm gonna rub some steel wool on the frame as well in this area as we can see there it's already wore down that's a bad machining job right there it's off maybe one or two thousandths. See that shiny spot? That should have been machined down further. So I'm going to take a file and cut that down. That looks like that's wearing just from cocking the hammer a few times. So we're going to take that off because that's done after the parkerization. But I did not, I did not remove that shiny spot right there. I'm going to do that now. I'm going to take my file. There we go. That took care of that. Hmm. Catch the edges here. Okay, that's the only spot it's binding. Looks like we've completely removed that with the file now. It took a little bit more parkerization off in the process, but happy about that. I wonder what it's doing on the other side of the frame, but we'll we'll look at that as soon as I polish this area with the steel wool. Machining inside here is really rough. I hope even with the work I'm doing right now it should loosen up everything after it gets shot a while.
see how the trigger runs on this now. Oh, that's so smooth. So smooth. No rubbing. That's better. A lot better. One thing we do want to do is on this cover, it's got the same surfaces on that side. So we're going to need to polish this right in here, this area. So that's the other side. I've already done it to both sides of the hammer. And you can see there's no shiny spots on the edges. I'm going to run a couple passes with the file and see what that exposes. A pretty bad burr right here and a uh, casting piece that's still sticking out here pretty bad. It's from a sprue from the uh, original casting that wasn't machined down. see the high spots where that hammer would drag at just after that little bit of work I'm going to go ahead and remove this off be careful not to lose the spring I hit this sprue pretty hard go ahead and take that down That should be a lot more smooth hammer pull, or trigger pull. All this together adds up. What you want to do is be careful, don't remove any of the external parkerization ruin the looks. Any of this internal buffing, this filing, scratching, it's fine. It's going to get lubed up anyway. It won't affect the uh, cosmetics. That looks good. Let's see what happens when I run the hammer over this side. Still a little gritty on the back here. There we go. Just took the right file. better. Alright. Set that back for cleaning. I want to get make sure I get all the steel wool particles out, like I said. Right, what else can we fix? Let's look at the trigger. We need to clean this, get the alcohol out. paper towel this time.
sometimes when you remove the grease you can immediately see where it's starting to wear. Go ahead and help that out. Remove some more of that off. Make sure it's nice and smooth. We'll check the, the mating surfaces between the hammer and the trigger and see how that is. If it's polished good enough. If not, add a little polish to it. Just do not remove much metal from a case hardened trigger or eventually that trigger is going to wear out. see where this has got a nice polish to it already well it has a polish it's not nice remove the alcohol from it you see that it's polished intentionally but we're going to add a little bit more to this with a steel wool because I can still feel a little pitting in here probably just the quality of the steel we're going to Give this a little help. We're not going to take a file to this part. Go cross grain just a little bit. done this with AR-15s a lot and went ahead and used rouge and, and uh, files and everything. I'm just not comfortable with taking that much down on this pistol. Don't look half bad to begin with. on the internals where it rubs on the frame. Let's go ahead and start on some of that. You can immediately see where it's got some spots that rubs. I'm going to remove all those. It's pretty bad burr right here on the side. We're not going to touch this edge. should have such a smooth trigger when we're done. There we go. Yeah, I can feel my finger. There's no burring or anything like there was. I'm going to hit the edge of this real quick. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Just a slight bit burring on the edge right here. Okay, that's all. The polishing, whenever they buff this, they even hit the edge of the trigger right here. I'll take that off. It's not visible, but it's just annoying me. A sharp little edge there. Alright, done. You see the shiny spots where that should have been flat all along, but it was sticking out. Now it's a lot better.
Next part I'm going to do is so the crane that holds the cylinder. I said I was going to clean the oil off this and give it a good give it a good buffing with the uh, steel wool. The parkerization, no matter where they put it, it just leaves a matte finish. It's not conducive to smoothness. It just leaves a rough finish. So we're just going to take it off. I'm not going to take it completely off, we're just going to take the roughness off of it. This is where you get your good cylinder spin. Starting to show smoothness now. Don't take much to remove that parkerization, but you need to remove it in certain key places. There we go. Happy with that. Nice and smooth now, but this is still rough. Honestly, I would polish this whole pistol later <laughs> just to get that smooth feel, but I'm only concerned about the performance right now, not the looks of it. I'm going to polish this shaft, but I'm not going to remove this from the cylinder. I'm going to work the file around it, just see if there's any high spots. Yeah, there are, good grief. Right there where the groove is, it's got some high edges. Where the machining there we go feels better nice and smooth still a little catching but I think that's where right now it's releasing the right once the extractor gets out of the cylinder so I think it's rubbing on the cylinder somewhere there don't know where Let's see if I can see where that's coming where it's uh, rubbing file each one just a little bit Let's see what happens I don't want it to be too loose, but if there's any burrs on it, I want to remove those. Let's 
so much better. No more binding. Extractor is not binding on the cylinder anymore. Just deburn the edges. Worked great. Yeah, there's no binding there. Can't feel it. That's a simple thing. Makes it so much better. Little parts like this, as you can see, if, you, if I can get this to focus, it already has a little bit of wear on the edges here. I'm going to smooth those out. Every place where you can smooth out potential wear points, right here on this side, it's really bad. I want to smooth that out just a tad. Not going to take much metal off, just smoothing it. These aren't the contact surfaces anyway, that is. These are parts that would wear on the side of the receiver. Slow the action down, cause friction. There we go. I'm going to take that all the way down. That's not so bad. The smooth, flat edge of that file right there, you run it down the side, you can feel where it's smooth or not. That one's smooth. This side's got a little bit of catch binding somewhere. The file you do that, it'll remove whatever's catching. good smooth don't take much to fix little problems these are the things they can't focus on in the factory because of the uh, mass production methods they use to build these Colts were originally put together by hand hand filed hand pieced hand, hand everything put them all together this is the kind of work that's lacking in the in the mass produce mass produced pistols. Now this stainless part everything seems to be pretty smooth on this. This is just the cylinder lock. I don't see any reason to do any adjustment for this. It's locking up nicely right now. If you take metal off of this, it's just going to make the cylinder more loose. The only reason to take metal off is if it was too jagged or, or too much. Uh, sticking up from the edge here or something. Like I said earlier, if you put the edge of that file on there and feel any uh, catching, it's okay to remove that. But you don't want to just sit here and work on the edge of that because it makes your cylinder gap wider. And then your cylinder sits there and does this. Yeah, this is pretty good. Same story with this part, I believe. A little bit better quality part here. Everything's nice and smooth. No issues. None that I can see. This has such a fine beaver tail on it. It's the cylinder opening button. It's got a fine beaver tail on it right here. I'm not going to modify that any. I am going to take a file and just smooth out these casting marks on the edges and see if that helps with opening and closing. So what that'll do, if there's any burrs on here or here, this will set and rub on the side of the receiver 
make scratch marks every time you open and open the cylinder it'll scratch that receiver I'm gonna put my fingernail here so it doesn't hit these beaver tails just remove any burrs I do feel some burrs here yeah I can see them now with a hitting them with a file they're tiny but they're there this is the stuff that'll make scratch marks within the first few times of opening a pistol if you don't remove this I've seen burrs like this on the 1911 where it's the um, like the cylinder takedown or not the cylinder but the barrel takedown uh, lever or the uh, safety has got burrs on it slide catch something like that and it rubs on your frame and just ruins the frame first time you ever use the pistol it's nice now let's look at this side not so bad maybe one little high spot right there I'll take it down now it's interesting that in here they knew it was gonna bind so they inserted these little plastic or Teflon buttons for it to slide on in here. They didn't put anything back here. Hmm. Oh well. That's fixed. You see the shiny spots there, especially over here? That's the edges I removed that would typically cause scratching on the on the frame. All right, we got the frame back out again. Here is where the trigger would typically rub on the receiver, and this machining right here. Oh my gosh. Pry that out right here. Pieces of metal. If you can see that or not. I'm gonna work this out. Polish this area right here like I did here. See if we can get that to be a lot more smooth without doing too much damage to it. Get it from this angle. Keep everything smooth. Yep, there went that piece of metal. on the end of the file yep we'll do this to the cover also in that same area make the trigger pull a lot less gritty see some machining defects where the cylinder stop goes up through here in this hole. I'm just gonna hit it with a file slightly. I'm not gonna take off too much. That could have been done better. take off too much it's gonna get slop in there the cylinders gonna start wobbling what I'm removing is obvious it should have been cleaned up now I'm gonna be easy on the top of this Really feeling right there. Yeah, right there. Well, some pretty bad spots right here. The high spot right here.
some of this metal you can see the poor quality of the machine work. But what can you expect for a $250 pistol? Expect to have to do some of this stuff on your own is what you expect. cone looks good no issues there now to the one thing I've been delaying see this barrel the crown on this barrel is perfect except it's used a sloppy tool got some bad grooves in it I'm not gonna modify that what I am gonna do is take this sharp edge off it'll cut you in a heartbeat so what I'm going to do is try to avoid damaging this pistol. But I'm just going to work around this edge with a file just lightly. Try to take some of that cutting edge off. Without bumping the parkerization on the barrel shroud just don't want to slice my hand open because it is very sharp and it's less than a 90 degree angle it's like an 80 degree angle so it'll definitely cut you It's still pretty sharp. Be careful. Slow down a little bit. across the top of this and we'll vibrate this file just a little bit to kind of even things out All right. doesn't feel like it's going to cut me anywhere now just taking off just a fine radius on that right here a little bit better. Yeah, I'm not feeling like it'll cut me now. Okay, now that is the process I'm going through to try to accurize this to make it easier to pull, easier to shoot, uh, take the grid out, uh, things like that. I'm not modifying the springs right now, anything like that. I may make a second round if this doesn't suit me. But uh, we'll see where this takes us. Now I'm going to go back and put this back together, lube it, and uh, see how well it shoots. All right, now I'm going to try to put this back together without losing any parts. <laughs> we'll see how that works out. I'm going to take this spring on a spring. goes here.
little bit hard to do. I'm going to use a screwdriver. Get in here and pull this short end back on here. That's one part of it. piece goes I think this cylinder stop goes next like how that spring is setting. If there was a hole for it in the frame, it would be nice, but apparently it just goes flush. that in. We're going to take the trigger. I'm going to put it over pin. We're going to press it down. You see how it activates the spring here for the trigger. And also slips over disengages and re-engages the cylinder stop lever. It's very interesting watching how these parts interact with each other. Next part I'm going to put in is the cylinder catch. Next thing we're going to do is to put the hammer assembly back together. We have a detent and a pin. We don't want to get those two mixed up. So I'm going to take the spring and put it in the hole. And this is the detent. It's got rounded edges. Put the detent back in. the detent. Now we can put the pin in. That went right in. Didn't have to hammer that out this time. Or hammer it in. I'll have to remember that next time. Yeah, as I thought, that would operate a lot more smoothly less gritty. It's not perfect, but it is less gritty. Okay, now we're going to take the hammer and we're going to put it in. What we're going to do, we're going to pull the trigger back a little. Set the hammer down in here. And then ease off on the trigger. The 
next two pieces are going to go together. It's the internal hammer block safety and the cylinder advance hand. That's what you call that. So these two pieces go together. Here's the spring for the hand that's on the safety. So we're going to put this cylinder hand in first on the top post. Set it in behind this little pin right here. Now we're going to take this spring here and set it in the groove as we put it on this pin and then drop this in. So I'm going to spring this in behind the hand first. this in a little bit first. There we go. It's all fits in. See how this will advance the cylinder and also slide up in front of the firing pin because if you pull back on the hammer and it goes off this just follows the hammer unless you hold the trigger down. If you hold the trigger down, this goes up in front of the firing pin and pushes the firing pin through the cylinder, through the, through the frame. And that's with me pushing, pressing the trigger down. If I don't press the trigger down, if this gets bumped or pulled, the safety does not go up in front of the firing pin when this goes off. You see there's still a gap here. There's always a gap unless you put your finger on the trigger and then, then it goes off. See the, the operation here. Letting go of the trigger pulls that back down out of the way. Alright. Let's make sure we've got all the bits and pieces assembled now. What I'm going to do is to put the mainspring back in first before I put the cover on. This is how it came out. It's longer on one side than the other. The short side goes to the back of the frame. There's a hole here that this ball goes in. But because we've got the pin in, it's just going to drop into this groove. What I'm going to do is remove the pin with the trigger pulled back, or with the hammer pulled back. Alright, that puts the spring tension back on. Now I can pull it back a little further and remove this pin. There we go. I always work on this thing so I can see it, but for you to see the internal actions in play here, I'm going to try to work these pieces with the cover off so you can see how they work. Cock the hammer. Oops, this piece got out of whack. Without the cover holding everything in place, that'll happen. Alright, so try to be careful. So I'm going to pull the hammer back. See how that would advance the cylinder to the next cylinder. Cocks in place. So I'll pull the trigger, releasing the hammer. safety bar goes up and it fires and then trigger reset. Looks 
like a proper functioning pistol. Let's do the double action mode. <laughs> Always something like that's gonna happen. Let's throw these back in. playing around with this and put the cover back on here we go everything's ready before I put the cover back on I'm gonna grease these parts up off camera but basically just taking grease putting all along these edges of all the parts internal around all these little pins just basically grease up this thing nicely not going to use oil. I want something that will last a good a long time. A good grade. Grease. Alright, now, now that I've got everything greased up nicely. Still got some grease on my finger. Uh, put this cover back on. Got a little catch here at the top, so you put that in edge. If you put that edge in first, push back on this, and then the rest drops in place. There you something misaligned let's check Okay, I need to tighten the screws. Notice I use a brass mallet for that. Use a plastic or brass, either one, or not. tighten these screws but make sure they're nice and snug from the factory these screws are very very loose they could have easily worked out on their own now that edges fit nicely let's try that Yeah, I'm not sure the it's not Hmm, got something out of alignment because the double action mode is locked up, it won't work. I 
figure that out. I think what my problem was is I put this little piece right here back in the wrong direction. exactly sure which direction it goes. Let's try this. Let's see if that works the action. reverse that piece. Let's just see what it would do. Turn it around. It's probably not going to do anything. It won't fit. No. It won't fit. Okay, learn something new. There we go. We get a lot faster at putting this thing together now. this cover back on. No more grittiness. It's a hard trigger pull because of the spring I did not modify, but everything is so smooth now. And that's what I wanted.
single screw here. That's another screw that was loose from the factory. All the screws were loose from the factory. It's like they wanted you to take it apart. on the end of the extractor. Threads are tight, but I'm happy about that. I don't want to lose that piece. Okay. Let's clean this thing up, wash my hands, and put the grips back on. Okay, the last piece of this job is to put the grips back on. And for today's purposes, we're going to put the larger plastic grips on. A little bit of the original oil on those still. Single screw. Feels really good, no grittiness, no friction that's not supposed to be there. Now that's something you can do yourself. Just take the time. And that's what changes it from a crappy $200 pistol to something a lot better to own. Well, now that we've got all that work done, let's take it out back and pop off a few rounds and see what it sounds like. Now that I've got the work done on the pistol, I'm out on the range. And I've never shot this pistol before, so let me get my hearing protection on and let's pop off about six rounds. I am limited on ammo because I bought the gun yesterday and the store had one box of 38 special ammo. Uh, blazer aluminum case, uh, 158 grain I think. So that's all I got. So I'm just gonna pop uh, off about six rounds and then save the rest for my wife and I to make another video. Okay, I've got my Chinese boxes on my head. That was a comment from another YouTube video uh, viewer. We've got the six rounds of Blazer aluminum case. I'm going to try these out and see what it does. Loaded nicely. Okay, I don't know if you can see the target down there or not, but I'm just going to aim for the center of that cardboard in single action and just take one shot to see where it goes. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to go pick it up to find out. Okay, it looks like it's shot a little bit left. I'm gonna try one more shot. I'm at seven yards. Seven yards. <laughs> yeah, that one didn't knock the thing over. But it was more towards center. Very little recoil. And still shooting a little low. Alright, so I'm going to try to take out one of these bottles of water. Let's see what happens. Again, at seven yards. I 
through the bottom of that one. Not a lot of splash. These are just full metal jacket rounds. Actually, they're round nose lead. Yeah, I missed that one. Let's try that one again. Not sure where it's hitting. I don't want to waste much more ammo. I nicked it. Let's see if I got one more shot. I don't know. Oh, that's it. Six rounds. I don't know how much of that got recorded because my phone got its memory full. So um, I had to delete a few things and film this last segment. This pistol is going to be a good one. I like it. Um, it's way better than it felt when I first bought it. And uh, after all that work, I think it's going to be a nice shooter. I just need some practice with it. Six shots is no indication of how well this gun shoots. But uh, I think it'll be great. Now, if you like this kind of video, you like farm life, you like uh, homesteading, you like uh, guns and gardening and all those things that country people like, please subscribe and set up the bell for notifications. We'd appreciate it. Have a good day.